Right, I'm telling you. My dogs are barking today. But man, my dogs are barking. Well, SEC football is in full swing in the 2023 season. And for Mississippi State, uh, that means it's time for them to play the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. And so on today's episode, we're going to be previewing that game with the one and only Stephen M. Smith, senior writer uh, for Touchdown Alabama. And Stephen is a friend of mine, but he's also a very talented guy. You'll see him on, on Feinbaum and ESPN. He's been writing for a while, reporting and we are so thankful to have Steven in today. Steven, how are you enjoying the season so far? It, it's been it's been good, Landon. It's been interesting. It's been uh, a journey of learning this team, which is so different from the teams that Saban has had in, in the past before. We've even seen a difference in Coach Saban at 71 years of age with name, image, likeness, the transfer portal. So many things that have been different. In the college football landscape, he's had to use the word patience. We've never seen that word exercised by Nick Saban quite often. I, I guess exercised more after Tua Tonga Valoa came for the program, but now it's like kicked in the overdrive because this is a new generation of athlete. But it's been fun watching Saban kind of do the fine balance and act of uh, when to be hardcore Nick Saban and when to be okay, uh, reserve kind of coach in a different way Nick Saban yeah and you know the second game of the season Alabama plays Texas this huge game everybody's watching and the game doesn't go the way that Alabama wants and, I, and a lot of people you know you and I both live in Tuscaloosa a lot of people uh man really went into panic mode of oh this must be the end Saban must be done he's over the hill I mean it's it's pretty remarkable to think about when you think about a what was his 10 point loss overall to a team uh, in Texas that seems to be one of the best teams in the nation. And now all of a sudden, Alabama beats Old Miss and looks pretty good doing it. There, there's some, there's some shortcomings, but isn't this, it, does it have a better feeling after the win against Old Miss that, okay, maybe people should have pumped the brakes a little bit. This Alabama team's actually pretty good. I'm going to say this, that this is very reminiscent to, 2015 Alabama. If you go back to that season, Jacob Coker started off as the quarterback. Uh, he started the game against Wisconsin. He started the game against Middle Tennessee. And everybody was like, okay, Coker's the guy. He's cool. Like, this is it. And then Coker gets benched against Ole Miss for Cooper Bateman. And we're all like, okay, what in the world is this? And, and Bateman goes out there and he struggles. And uh, all types of things go wrong, and Coker goes in the second half, and he has a valiant effort, though you lose 37-43. to 43. And then Dan Wolken of USA Today puts out an article of a dynasty's dead, it's over. And Saban has one of the greatest rants of all time. You guys thought we were six feet buried and gone. And then the very next week, they go to Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. It's drenched monsoon rain. Bama is an underdog in this matchup, but Jacob Coker and Derrick Henry and the guys just smacked George in the mouth, 38 to 10, and they would go on to play for a national championship and win that. This season is very reminiscent to 2015. You look at Jalen Milrow starts the first two games. Of course, the loss to Texas. Everybody's like, it's over. Saban's done for again. Uh, keep in mind, Steve Sarkeesian is a great coach in his own right. Uh, Texas has veteran players, explosive players. Texas probably has one of the best rosters in college football. They have a very good coaching staff. Quite a few of those guys came from Nick Saban on that coaching staff, so there's that. And you go to South Florida, Jalen Miro gets benched. Here comes Tyler Buckner, of whom Buckner, not a good showing for him by any sense of the imagination. Ty Simpson goes out there, does what he has to do. And so now Jalen Milrose is a starter again. He should have been a starter from the jump, even against South, South Florida. But that's neither here nor there. Plays a good game against Ole Miss, despite one bad throw. And so now we're here. So we, we all know national media loves to stir the pot. They love to bring controversy. They love the sky is falling narrative because it gets them clicks on their articles, which creates money. We all like revenue. But at the same time, Coach Saban is like, look, I'm still here. 
we got a team that we believe in, we trust in. Yes, it may take them a minute, but I think the second half against Ole Miss, we finally start to see, okay, this team is good. They just have to believe in themselves that we're good. Right, right. And now all of a sudden, you know, you, you bring that up to speed and look at the other side of the aisle with Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State drops uh, that game against LSU, which really just offensively was one of the worst showings um, I, I, that, that I can remember in a long time. And then all of a sudden, last week, Mississippi State seems to figure out what they're doing offensively. Will Rogers, out of all the games he's ever played at Mississippi State, throws what I believe is his best statistical performance, 487 yards through the air against South Carolina to Lou Griffin. Uh, seven catches for 256 and a touchdown. Um, the offense looked looked great. It was the defense that let them down, which is not typical. The de- Mississippi State seems to usually have a defense that will help them to stay in the game. The offense doesn't really usually come through. And so now we we bring to this week. Um, are there any? You know, uh, Vegas says that Alabama is going to beat Mississippi State. I believe by 15 or 14 and a half. Um, I, I don't think there's any Mississippi State fan that has the argument or thought that they're going to uh, win. But is there any anything that you look at with Alabama's uh, weaknesses and m- maybe a strength of Mississippi State? Uh, or do you just think this is one that kind of gets out of hand early? Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Is it going to be close for a while uh, or kind of get out of hand uh, early on and, and Mississippi State's not going to be able to catch back up? This can be a very interesting game here, Landon, just due to State has a good front seven defensively. They have a very good front seven. that They've got some dudes that can really cause some problems. And for Alabama, a young offensive line that's starting to kind of find itself. When you look at Caden Proctor as a freshman left tackle, when you got, you know, Terrence Ferguson got banged up there against against Ole Miss, he may not go against Mississippi State, the uh, the redshirt junior from, from Georgia. And if you don't have T. Ferg out there, you're looking at Darian Dalcourt, you're looking at Jaden Roberts, another young player. I mean, you got two freshmen, uh, Olas Anganin and, and Rock Montgomery, that are both talented, but are they necessarily ready to play now? So more than likely, you're looking at Darian Dalcourt at that right, at that left guard spot next to Caden Proctor. You got, you got a young offensive line. And for State, it, it, it seems like every year where State and Alabama gets together, especially under Nick Saban, it is a nasty, grimy, gritty, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a war type of game. Like Very far and in between, we've seen a, a game where Alabama just boat races State. I remember plenty of games where the final score was 30 to 21 or 30 to 24. Or there was one year with Dak Prescott, it was 25-19. Th- those were some tough football games. And you're just like, just get me out of here with nobody getting hurt. That- that's the one thing you're saying. Get me out of here with nobody having an injury. And y- you got to give Zach Arnett a lot of credit. W- what he was able to do, losing Mike Leach to a tragic death was horrible. Mike Leach has meant a lot to this conference. He's meant a lot to Mississippi State. He brought in an air raid offense, which was starting to kind of take root. And then to lose him uh, and the way that State did in this conference did it, it's terrible. And uh, for Zach Arnett to come in and kind of sort of put his hand on this program and, and try to bring it back with some sort of an identity. And I know Coach Arnett wants to be ground and pound, but much of his talent there is air raid. So he's having to adjust with all of that. But I look at the defensive front of State versus Alabama's offensive line, that's going to be the tale of this game. Because if State can really get after Alabama's offensive line, this can be a very close matchup. Yeah, and, you know, I I can already hear Mississippi State fans saying it. You know, this year, for whatever reason or another, um, State does not seem to have a pass rush, which which seems like every year they have. This kind of seems a year that's that's off. But, you know, this is also – the final, um, you know, th- this is the last year we have for maybe a little while uh, of this this matchup happening. Do you have any particular, uh, is, is there a particular fondness you have with this rivalry, other than the fact that uh, it's it seems to always goes go Alabama's way? Uh, okay, so pr- probably one of my probably one of my favorite memories here uh, from this rivalry. I, I was in Starkville, twenty fifteen, the year that. 
Derrick Henry kind of went crazy in that matchup. But I remember in that game, uh, Jacob Coker just finding Calvin Ridley on on different plays and, and the way Ridley uh, stepped up there in that game as a freshman. Uh, that was one that, that I was fond of. I was there. And then uh, the game in 2014, the previous year, where State came to Tuscaloosa, Dak Prescott literally put on almost a show and uh, came so close to winning that game, if not for Blake Sims having one to two plays better in that matchup. So uh, 2014 and 2015 are my two fondest ones. Now, 2019 was tough watching Tua get hurt in that game and the hip injury and that, 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 that was real tough right there. But I think 2014 and 15, uh, uh, watching Alabama try to pull those two games out against the Mississippi State bunch coached by Dan Mullen, that fought you all the way to the end, two of my fondest ones. Yeah, and it seems kind of odd just thinking that this is not going to be something that's a, con a consistent thing, you know, where uh, where we can know to expect it, you know, the, the next year. And we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. But I wouldn't, I personally, I wouldn't imagine that there is a, um, that, that this is going to be something to where we don't see you guys for, you know, six or seven years. Do you have any insight to that or just any thoughts on what that's going to be like in the years going forward? I, I look at with, you know, uh, Greg, with uh, Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner and his foresight and won this to go to a 16 team super conference, treating this like it's the big 12 and <laughs> and, and not having the divisions that, you know, we, we have grown so accustomed to, to having. But I also know that, that commissioner Sankey is one for also keeping rivalries alive. So I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't look at this as something where, you don't have this for six or for six or seven years. I would look at maybe not having Mississippi State next year, but then 2025 they work that back in, and then 2027 they work back they work it back in, and 2029 they work it back in. So I look at this as something different that the conference wants to try, but I don't think they'll do away with the rivalries completely, especially with Oklahoma and Texas coming in as of next year that fosters more rivalries, more competitive fun, more matchups, and then the college football playoff going to 12 teams, which, holy cow, I, I mean, four teams was already uh, something, but not 12? Now, now, now you're really putting the, the committee up, can we get a two-loss team, a three-loss team in here? Like The, 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 the scenarios starting next year of this 12-team playoff, you're going to have three loss teams arguing, well, our three losses were against top 25 opponents. We should be in here. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a madhouse. I yeah, I do not envy I do not envy those people when you know, once you get to 9, 10, 11, specifically 12 because you know, whatever team is in at 12, 13 is going to go, "Well, hey, now wait a minute." And 14 is going to go, "Well, actually." So I don't I don't, you know, I don't Look, uh, the, the, wish the, I was the, the, the 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 people land in, in Grapevine, Texas who have to do this, I don't envy that, that 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 room of people because they're the ones that have to watch tons of tape, especially teams, like you mentioned, 11 through 13 or 10 through, 10 through 14, where you have to pencil in those final spots and you're going to have coaches lobbying, hey, 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 like, we, we played, you know, a hard you know, Texas and a hard Clemson and a hard Texas Tech and a hard West Virginia and a hard, put us in here. Like, I, I don't envy the people in Grapevine, Texas, that have to literally discuss the last four or five slots here of this play. Yeah. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll finish with this, just kind of playing a quick game of, you know, if. And I'll, I'll start off with this. You know, I think the Bulldogs win the game if uh, they're able to generate any sort of pass rush and, and make it close. Um, it, it seems as if Kyle Ferry, uh, freshman kicker uh, for, for, uh, for the Dogs, um, is, a, is good. It seems like they, they've kind of found their guy. And um, I, I think if, if, there's a, if they have any type of rush, keep it close, um, it is possible to, to win that one really close with a, with a field goal and an efficient offense without, without any turnover. So I think you know, that has to happen in order for them to win. What say you? Alabama wins if? Alabama, Alabama wins this game if uh, this the defensive line harasses Will Rogers the entire game 
And then if the offensive line uh, holds up and it does not allow Mississippi State's defensive front to get any type of momentum, I think if the offensive line and defensive line for Alabama, those two groups do their job, this it, it could it could be a runaway if those two groups do their job. Now, those two groups have issues, and then if the crowd gets involved and you're having false start penalties and pre-snap issues, then this could become a barn burner. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Well, again, we thank, uh, thank you guys so much for listening in. Thank you so much to, to Stephen M. Smith uh, for listening in. Uh, Stephen is a senior writer and reporter for Touchdown Alabama Magazine. He's been covering Alabama football for over 10 years. Uh, as I mentioned, been on uh, ESPN and several other uh, outlets as an analyst. We're so thankful that Stephen was able to join us today. And thank you so much for listening to the My Dogs Are Barking podcast.